You're listening to Pole Parlor, a fun, inspiring podcast for all those bewitched by pole dance. Each week, your Madam Crimson Minx has candid conversation with unique, engaging individuals from within and around the pole dance community. Pole Parlor is passionate about preaching creativity, soulful sensuality, and empowerment through pole dance. You know how we do. Welcome everyone to Pole Parlor. This is episode 42, Rebecca Boyle, a.k.a. Pole Priestess. I'm your host, Crimson Minx. This week on the podcast, we have Rebecca Boyle, the beautiful soul behind Pole Priestess. On this episode, we talk about how Rebecca experiences pole dance as a spiritual practice, how she developed Pole Priestess as a method of integrating the divine feminine into pole dance instruction, She gives advice on how we can integrate this style of conscious movement meditation into our own pole practices and shares her experience performing at Burning Man in other outdoor locales. Fair warning, we get a bit woo-woo, but even if that's not your thing, I assure you this is a very fascinating and even potentially transformative episode. And as always, don't forget to check out Rebecca's post-podcast interview on the blog at poleparlor.com where she shares her favorite photos, music, video, and more. And if you are enjoying these episodes, I would be forever grateful if you took the time to leave a rating on iTunes, subscribe to YouTube, and share it with your pole homies so we can continue to spread the good word of pole dance. And now, here's Pole Priestess. Welcome, Rebecca Boyle, a.k.a. Pole Priestess, to the Pole Parlor Podcast. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you, Crimson. I'm excited to be on your podcast. Oh, well, we're so excited to have you. And we will start off with the same question we ask everyone, which is, (laughs) how long have you been polling and how did you first discover pole dance? Uh, Well, I've been polling for about five years, and um, I discovered it through a friend who was herself really into pole dancing, and she would always bust out the sexiest outfit and pull at her parties, which, you know, back then, you know, seven-ish years ago was, um, you know, not something you experienced much. I don't think that happens today still, for the record, but maybe amongst (laughs) us, our tribe of pollers, but... (laughs) Uh Totally. Yeah. Now that I'm in it, we, yeah. I mean, I was Seems just at a party normal. on Saturday and we all busted out into pole and okay. are in our panties, just running around, <laughs> riding on the ground. Um, awesome. but th- at this point she was the only one that would do this and it would inspire the whole environment to just be sexy and play and just loosen up. And then eventually she got into teaching. And then, so we had this very special group of about five women who were religious about meeting and learning pole from her. Um, so that was my breakthrough into pole. And what I discovered is at this time when I, when I was starting these lessons, my life was going through a big transformation. I was, um, leaving a relationship of seven years. I'd started a successful business with that person. And so it was this sticky, like, how do we disengage as a partnership, but still handle the business. Um, and then shortly after that, I got into this torrid love affair with someone who ended up just shattering my heart. And, and so then it was like this entrance into like single life. Finally, after getting through the relationship, reestablishing as a partnership in business, letting go of this kind of like rebound love affair, and then finding myself as this independent woman after almost eight years of like, entanglement in relationships with men and poll just gave me that grounding point and the experience of um building my own and developing my own potential yeah. in literally body mind and soul and so for me poll right away has been this um deeply spiritual communion with myself yeah. really? and learning how to be independent through through these through this practice of like you know, this unwavering pull and all my wild emotions and all the crazy life stuff I was going through. Yeah. Were you, did you learn at a studio or was this kind of like your friend just kind of taught you at her house or something like that? Um, She taught, she taught from her house, um, but she lived in an amazing like mats in container, architecturally like 
incredible home. And so uh, she had a dedicated dance space, which had these big glass doors that opened up to an oak grove. And um, is this, are you in California? Yeah. Like you're in Los Angeles, and so, yeah. So this, this was in, in Topanga okay. specifically. Okay, people don't know what Topanga is, you know, for <laughs> our non-California or non-US <laughs> listeners and and viewers. Um, Topanga is just like this beautiful community in the mountains of this in the Santa Monica Mountains, right, of mm-hmm. Los Angeles. Like it, from certain perspectives, you can see the Pacific Ocean, and it's just like heaven. So <laughs> yeah, it's a magic enclave of of people. And, um, so yeah, this was a very Topanga experience in the mountains. As I said, in an Oak Grove, um, we would dance with actually the, usually the blinds closed and we'd have candles. And, um, so we were always in very dim light and we would dress really sexy. And since it was informal and we were friends, we would, you know, we were just, there was no, um, there was just no holding back. So we would talk about all kinds of crazy stuff and just be very open and honest with each other about how we were feeling or what we were going through or, um, you know, while all while wearing like whatever lingerie we felt inspired to wear that <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. The reason I wanted to have you on um, was because, you know, I was going through our past guests and we've had amazing past guests and we've had so such a diversity of people. We've spoken with people who are, you know, athletic pullers or competitive pullers or, you know, um, come from a stripper background or come from an entertainment perspective, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, or business owners. But I was like, wait, We've never had really spoken to someone dedicated specifically to pulling as like a spiritual practice. Um, mm-hmm. We had Almitra Karastan on. Um, if anyone wants to look up her past episode, uh, we spoke a, a bit about pull as a spiritual practice, but you know, we didn't go into the full episode on it. So, um, and you're the one that I've kind of connected with online who I saw like this perspective from. So, oh, cool. yeah, that's how. Um, I would, you know, love to talk about that more. So, like, what is your philosophy as of pulling as a spiritual practice? Well, uh, gosh, it's I have a lot of philosophy around it, actually. Take your um, time. We have we have a lot of time, so <laughs> go into it. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Um, so, for me, as I kind of explained a little bit of my background, getting into it, working through. Um, discovering my independence and my strength as a woman and like starting to understand what the force of femininity was. It was not an intellectual pursuit, but what I found as I was pole dancing specifically, because pole dancing is about opening your sensual channels and what is more sensual than feminine energy. So I moved actually very much from a more masculine perspective of like running a business and, um, you know, going about my daily life, um, in more of like a mentally driven mentality and then, whoa, being just completely overwhelmed by the power and beauty of this dance and finding this grace and this femininity. And with this discovery came all of these like spiritual downloads really. And, um, so I started like fluffing off like layers of reality and parts of my identity that, um, were no, were clearly no longer serving me and, um, discovering this rise of the divine feminine in my own life. And, um, as I've gone through creating the practice of what pole priestess is, um, actually putting like the science behind it and the knowledge behind it and the research behind it. And essentially it's allowing this, First of all, acknowledging and recognizing that there is an energy force which is feminine. And so what is this? And what are the archetypes surrounding it? And so in the pole priestess practice, I like to incorporate everything. The silly little playful girl to the deep, angry, fierce feminine to just the sultry and the whatever. Whatever connotation or um, description or archetype you can come up with is is the divine feminine. And... um, So as I've taken this journey and opened up to what this actually is, um, it's the connection to this divine energy. It's the connection and the recognition in each other, the connection between women um, as as a goddess. So it's not the I like, oh, Rebecca Boyle or Crimson Minx and our ego and our identity. It's the essence that is within you. And it's that essence 
in me recognizing the essence in you and vice versa and breaking down the barriers of competition or jealousy or criticism um, within ourselves and in that interaction. Um, so it, it's, it's breaking down body image issues and what we consider to be beautiful or what even we consider to be feminine. Um, what is femininity? It's flow. It's love. It's connection. It's reverence for life. It's, um, getting so sensitive to your own, um, process of living that, that you can't help but love yourself. And when you combine that with dance and the tribe of women that you end up dancing with, um, there's a deep sense of bonding and a deep sense of reverence. So did you have that connection before or that awareness before, or was this something that kind of all was revealed to you through pole? It was... I would say it was defined by pole, okay. but yeah, it's always been with me. I've always been a female centric, um, sisterhood kind of a right. person. And in the questionnaire that you put online um, or on the blog, I mentioned that I homeschooled. Yeah. So, um, for me, I spent a lot of time alone or with, um, actually my social life as a teenager was very sparse, <laughs> but the, but the women that were in my life and the friends that and, you know, that I ended up bringing in were very, um, select. And my, so my connections for, to them were very, um, clear and positive. And so I grew up with this idea that women are your friends, women are your sisters. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was a harsh lesson once I really got into with the world that, oh my God, women are not like this and they don't love each other and they're not necessarily your allies. And, um, so that was a little bit of a painful lesson. Um, so, you know, you, you guard yourself when you become an adult and you, you start building these layers that disconnect you from your own essences and that of others. So pull for me was like, oh, wow. Like actually there's this incredible empowerment in these original feelings I had about women. So I'm just going to go ahead and let all that shit go <laughs> and, and build up a, an environment around me where I can be empowered in these ways of thinking and empower other people to, and to do these same things, invite them into a space where they can just be together and have fun and play and be sensual and sexual and, um, and wild and, um, play with all of these really, really sacred elements of themselves. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us like, what is, what is your pole priestess teaching system? Well, it um, I've, as I've, discovered these things personally for myself, I naturally wanted to share them mm -hmm. and share the, the space of like, Oh my God, how much better does it feel to love yourself and to dance and be beautiful and really feel your essence? Um, so, you know, it led me to wanting to develop a, a methodology mm -hmm. to teach it. Um, so as I went on the journey of like understanding the science behind it and um, looking into ancient dance practices, mm -hmm. um, Tantra has become the um, foundation for my dance, really, and how to impart it. Um, so tantra, Tantric practices are about... Um, becoming very, very sensitive in your body. And there's an idea that, um, you become so aware of your body, you move with breath, um, to a point where you're actually opening, uh, portals in your body, or you're opening your body up as a portal to allow more spirit or soul to reside in your physical being. So that's what the dance practice is actually all about. And this is what I experienced when I first started polling is like, Oh my God, I'm filled with this spirit now. Um, so in poll priestess, the foundation is breath. Um, and there's this beautiful quote, um, by this dance guru woman, um, named Gabrielle Roth, who started the five rhythms for anyone who knows that, or wants to look into it. It's an amazing, like shamanic dance practice. Um, but she says, um, the undulation of breath is sensuality. And, um, so that goes along very much with pole dancing. Um, so my methodology is about slowing it down, following your breath, 
opening up to your stretches in an artful and discovery type of way. So you're, you're never just stretching or mentally berating your body into contortions or movements. You're with your body the whole time. You're breathing, you're opening, and you're dancing into those el- elongations. And, um, and you're being so gentle and sensitive. And when you come to your edge, wherever that is, I mean, if you're an epic flexible and you're, you know, one leg's over there, one leg's over there, or you're stiff and you're just starting out for the first time and you're trepidatious about moving into your body, um, which can happen because we hold a lot of emotional trauma in our bodies. And I talk about my own dance practice as being um, a way that I transmute reality, um, which I I touch on this a lot in my Instagram posts, like these ideas of like processing my life through my dance. And it's very true. Like, you know, the recent death of my cat. Um, I couldn't dance for uh, many days because I was so upset. But once I, I got to a place where I could dance, oh my God, the level of emotion that, I mean, I was doing moves that I've never done before. Um, so these emotions that are stored in the body, um, have very real physical effects on us, um, to the point of possibly even creating disease. So when you go into this journey and you're even just doing basic stretches and you're breathing and you're really, really being present with these areas of your body, I mean, you can start to cry. You can have memories of things that you've totally forgotten about. Um, so when you're moving this slowly and consciously into your physical vessel, there's a plethora of, um, of experiences and concepts and imagery that you may experience. Um, so the pole priestess foundation is literally just going so slow, being so conscious with your process and so patient and so loving. And I like to incorporate like, um, affirmations or talking to your body as you move through. Um, so like maybe you're in a stretch and you're not going as far as you'd like. And you have that thought of like, Oh, I'm not that flexible. Or, um, I was more flexible last week. And what happened? Um, stopping yourself and, and talking to yourself, literally just saying like, Oh, I love you. I love my body. I love you leg. Like I'm feeling I'm coming up against some kind of fear here. And you know what? I'm going to breathe and recognize there's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, I have literally done this and stretched like four more inches into a uh, direction because, um, <laughs> yeah, no, you should. It's, it sounds cheesy <laughs> in some ways to <laughs> be, uh, you know, in there just like crying to yourself and, you know, t- talking sweet nothings to your legs, but you know, <laughs> open like straddle stretch, but, um, it works. Mm-hmm. And, um, just, you know, breaking down again, like the science of it, there's, scientific studies and proof about the vibration of sound. So the, even the vibration of your voice um, emanating into your own body, taking the electromagnetic energy of your hands and, and stroking sensually um, and with care and with breath, um, there's, a, there's a power to that. And there's an energy that you're bringing back into self. So um, when we move past the stretches and we move into like more of a uh, – you know, actual dance, dance, um, your hand gestures, whether your hands are open or closed or on your body or out here, these are all, um, symbols. And, um, and this is all a way that you're, that you're generating and expressing energy. Um, so there's a lot to explore. There's no reason to just rush into it. There's, um, you know, there's all of the, the fine aspects of your body um, that opens up to allow this spiritual, soulful experience. And, um, it's about going slow, breathing, finding pace. Um, and then we move that onto the pole. And I have found, um, that it's much easier to tap into this body intelligence and dance from there because you're not having to think yourself into a trick. You're not having to think yourself into a dance move. You might find yourself contorted around the pole in a way that you could never think your way to because your body wants to, it wants to communicate. So when you give it that space and you allow the natural intelligence to just ride through, you will be so surprised yourself at what opens up. 
I mean, I have been so many times, um, just all of a sudden I'm like, Oh my God, what happened? How did I even find that move? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Cause I know for myself, like I'm a massive breath holder. And so I feel like this is a great challenge for me and for, you know, for all of us, like, I think sometimes when I'm dancing, I think like, okay, I want to do that thing I saw on Instagram and like, (laughs) all right, where's my hand supposed to go? And like, (laughs) and I'm not breathing and I'm just like picturing like someone else and trying to move like them. And so you're not conscious at all. And it sounds like what you're preaching is like uh, the opposite, which is just like consciousness of your of just yourself and just, you know, letting your body move as it's supposed to and maybe stop mimicking other people and just kind of more exploration, I would, I would assume. Yeah, totally. Total exploration. And I mean, I try to do moves off Instagram too, and I'll, (laughs) I'll get into my masculine, more mental place and think, okay, well, this is how it's done. And usually I'm terrible at that, but (laughs) what I do, and this is actually works and it, it goes along with this more feminine principle is I'll watch a video and then I'll just suggest to my body, like I'm going to dance and I'm going to, I want the, I want to get to this point. So let's just see if we can get there. And then I close off that, that mental chatter and kind of get into my moving meditation. And sometimes I do find that move. Um, so just accessing your body's intelligence and getting rid of the idea that your mind is actually in your brain, um, which I've been doing um, some research um, uh, via this uh, neuroscientist named um, Carolyn Pert. And she uh, talks about how the mind, the molecules in the mind, like what we think are the mind in the brain, is actually throughout your entire body. And her philosophy or her um, theory is that your body is your subconscious mind. So, yeah, it is cool. And when you start appealing to your body like it is an intelligent vessel, um, then you don't have to try so hard to do a lot of these amazing, miraculous moves that we uh, covet so dearly in our pole experience. Yeah, that's true because you think like, oh, I have to memorize it. It's all like in the brain and it's all studying when you're saying if your consciousness is actually throughout your body, then it's kind of like, no, you don't have to necessarily consider it something you study. It's something kind of that you live into a little yeah. bit and let it, let it mm-hmm. move for itself. Totally. Yeah. And it's a practice. It's literally like my methodology is not fast. It's, you know, in six months, you're not going to have like all these tricks, um, you know, on, on your belt. Or... yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know, I know people who have started pole this year that can do more tricks than I can do. Um, because it's not about that really. That's it's, your... it's about, it's about all of these other aspects. And then when you get to use the pole from this, it's like, God, it's like eating a delicious, rich chocolate cake. So I'd rather have a few bites of that than like a thousand cookies. <laughs> <laughs> It's more of like a decadent experience, right? Like, because the end goal is not, it seems like for you, the end goal is not to like get that trick, get first place, you know, it, which would be, um, you know, for those who aren't familiar, I know we're getting woo woo, but, um, <laughs> you know, I gave, I gave that warning in the, in the intro. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, gotta go with more. it, but it's <laughs> like, you know, for those who don't know with, you know, masculine and feminine energy, masculine energy is more like competitive and it's more like achievement based and like, um, right. you know, um, getting this being like more ego driven, I guess, where, you know, the feminine um, practice that Rebecca is talking about is just like experience and internal change and emotional change. And like you said, it was healing. You call, would you call it a movement, moving meditation or dance meditation? Yeah. Moving meditation. Mm-hmm. Meditation. So it's just more woo woo guys. And it's, but yep. you know, it can be healing <laughs> and up. you know, maybe as it's something to consider if you know, your, you know, your wrists are hurting or your shoulders are hurting and, but mm-hmm. you still want to, you know, maybe take a break, but still pull or dance, you know, maybe you can tap into this other side and just trust your body and maybe your body will naturally not do wrist and shoulder moves and you can experiment in other ways and just don't see it as checking things off your list, but like, you know, as, a, as a, just an experience, a meditative experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually. And I'm glad you touched on a few points there uh, regarding like 
um, you know, injury or fatigue in the body. Um, it's, it's really important to honor that at all times and, um, allow other aspects to develop based on that. So let your injuries or your point of, you know, wh- whatever condition you're in to inform other aspects of your dance. Um, I have to say last year I had an injury, which prevented me from pulling for eight months, oh my God. which was torture. Oh my God. I was dying. Um, I was way more neurotic and bitchy and just <laughs> not in a good mood for that whole time. But, um, I have to say at this point, I am grateful for that injury because of the other parts of me, of my dance that developed. I mean, I became, I've always been bad at balancing in general. I can balance and like pirouette and land on my toes and just be like, ah, perfectly now because I spent a lot of time getting into my legs, um, and doing, just doing whatever dance I could. And now married with pole, my dance style is completely changed for the better. But, you know, it took going through a very difficult situation to get there. But I honored it, you know, I had to just be with it. And, um, and I was, I'm grateful for, um, for the result. But you have to, you just have to allow, it's the feminine again, Uh, just allow, just flow, just go where you can go instead of, you know, beating your head against where you can't go. Yeah. And if anyone um, is, it's not clear, like, this is, applicable for men too, right? Like, oh, absolutely. Have yeah. Feminine energy. And it probably, you mm-hmm. know, I actually, my favorite male pole dancers definitely are heavy in the feminine energy because, you know, mm-hmm. um, they, it's a more balance, you know? Yeah. And movement. you know, it's the, the, the idea of the divine feminine or feminine energy is not gender specific. It's just mm-hmm. essence. Yeah. It's like, think of the yin and yang symbol and how there's, you know, the white within the black and the black within the white. It's, you know, we're all, I know women who are very masculine mm-hmm. and, um, you know, and vice versa. So it's, it's just about tapping into an essence and a way of being yeah. and, you know, that's the point. Yeah. And so you, you know, obviously you have this, this practice and you teach, where do you teach like is, and what, who, who were the kind of students that you've come in contact with? (laughs) Um, well, right now I'm actually not teaching. Um, I'm busy developing another business. Um, pole for me and pole priestess specifically is the most dearest, most passionate part of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, when I first developed it, I struggled with, do I put up, do I go all in? Do I make this my living? Do I, um, sacrifice everything else for it? And for a minute I was doing that, but I I also ran into the, the points of like, Oh man, am I compromising the actual practice in certain ways by not being properly funded or by being too tired or by staying up too late, trying to, trying to create all these playlists. Like I very much felt myself coming out of my feminine to do it. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like I can't, I have to be the vessel of this energy in order to actually bring out about this work. So what I did is I've just dived into my other business and now, um, I I've taken on more partners and I'm working on this big expansion, which ultimately will supply my pole priestess (laughs) uh, reality. Um, so it's kind of, for me, it's this, um, shifting game of putting my energy here when I can and then moving back into the world and pursuing more like money pursuits that, you know, that in which all of these things flow together. Yeah, that's a perfect example of how you're, you know, balancing the energies of your life. May I ask like, what is your, your other business? (laughs) Yes. Um, so I've been in the cannabis industry for Ah. seven years (laughs) and, Um, so we're just about to expand into creating an extract company, which will have statewide distribution. So, uh, you know, it's much bigger business. Uh, we're taking on quite a lot of responsibility with that. Um, so pole priestess is taking a little bit of a backseat as far as teaching. I obviously practice every day on my own and I also perform. So I've put, um, a lot of energy into my performances and just to keep it alive and to also just connect with the community and share what, share the energy of it. Um, but I do have a lot of requests to teach and I love it so much and I definitely will be back. I want to create a workshop series, which involves 
kind of doing like day retreats into beautiful places and dancing in these gorgeous places. Yeah, so like whether it's your friend's house in Topanga for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Things like that or like setting up in the desert and just, you know, getting wild, maybe having a bonfire, setting up some poles, bringing some food and just, you know, having a day where, you know, we get out of our normal realities and, um, you know, commune sounds, with the elements. That sounds beautiful. Sign me up. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's all, you know, you're, I think you are embodying what almost the pole priestess practice is, which, which is like not taking over your life, but like this idea of dance and movement and pole and spirituality supporting your life and being kind of, um, almost something that enhances your non-dance pole life, your, your real life, quote unquote. Oh yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I mean, what, what this whole journey for me has been about is um, coming down to my essential self. And that applies to everything that I do. So in my other businesses, I bring that energy to it. I can still share. Um, In fact, it's interesting because the cannabis community, the the cannabis in it of itself is a feminine plant. And I think that it's really important for women like me who are business savvy, who do have a logical mind to apply themselves to expanding this business because you just can't, I just can't let it become a male dominated, um, situation. Not like a bro situation or something, which it has the potential. So good for you. Oh, it's been, it's been in the bro realm realm? for a long time. (laughs) So I I feel a responsibility to carry it. (laughs) Yeah. For those, in case you're curious, uh, weed and cannabis is legal in California. So (laughs) this is like a complete legit. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's totally legit. But yeah, so that's, you know, I definitely uh, vacillate between these two aspects of myself, but really it's all, it's all one, you know. So while you're not offering classes, do you have any tips for us? Maybe some of us who want to uh, kind of tap into this feminine um, pole priestess style of dancing, but maybe struggle a little bit. Do you have like a a tip or two that, that I would say, um, put on some really beautiful, but slow music and, um, do something really sensual for yourself. Like my favorite outfit is like some beautiful lingerie with like a cashmere sweater or a wrap. I like to feel that. I mean, and another point is your body will respond to textures and what you put on it. Even if, um, even if you're, you're thinking, Oh, I don't really like this outfit and you try it on your body might really like it. So experiment with outfits. Um, make it a ceremony, light some candles, get your slow music going, get your special attire on and just sit and breathe and let the movements, um, start from your breath. So where are you breathing into? Are you breathing into your chest? Are you breathing into your belly? Just notice how shallow or deep your breath is. Exhale completely like, and then allow that first breath to just fill your whole body and just see where you naturally start to move. This is your body's intelligence and and intuition opening up. And if you just follow it, don't do the moves you think you want to do. Just let your body move. And you may find like five minutes later, you ended up in a completely opposite area of the room, cat pouncing, rolling, somehow you got there, but uh, you felt your way through it. You didn't move yourself with your mind. Mm. So go slow. Don't, don't try to do a bunch of moves. Just be very, very present with your breath. And I think you'd be surprised at the kind of movements you'd find yourself, um, dancing your way through. So it's about feeling. It's a feeling practice. I'm going to try this. I'm definitely trying this. (laughs) I hope, you know, if anyone tries this and wants to like comment on the blog post or in the YouTube video, like I want to hear because, you know, I think this is not the dominant way. I know a lot of people do um, practice pulling this way, but I don't think it's the dominant way. And I think maybe it's new new for a lot of us. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) well, I think breath can help anyone. Like, honestly, whether you're a champion, athletic dancer who just does not resonate with anything I'm saying here. (laughs) (laughs) You can, if you're, especially with the pole, because you're moving your body in all these crazy ways. But if you're breathing with that, you're going to find yourself going much deeper into those pole contortions just because your body is actually literally opening up. It's contracting. I mean, dance is really this, this dance between, um, uh, 
ex, um, contracting and expanding, contracting and expanding always. So it's, that especially applies to pull. When you don't have a margin of like, ah, you're, you are literally <laughs> like, your body's going like this around a very hard object. So if you can yeah. really breathe into it, you can become fluid, like, you know, liquid silver around the pole. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's great advice. It's for everyone. And that sounds like something that would be a lot um, more interesting to watch and to experience as opposed mm-hmm. to like fighting the object, because I've de- we've definitely had this conversation on the the podcast before that sometimes we just feel like we're, we're fighting the instrument, right? Like this, uh-huh. it's like this hard object that, you know, how do you <laughs> work with it? So this is one way to work with it. So whatever uh-huh. your style of dance, this is, you can take elements of this pole priestess practice and apply it. And I think, you know, be more successful in, in your movement. Yeah, like surrender, surrender to it, because the pole is the hard part. The pole is the masculine, the divine mm-hmm. masculine, the unwavering, the stable. And here you are, this feminine, just flowing all over it. And of course, it takes massive strength to pole dance. Yeah. That's the that's you know, I think the biggest misnomer to people who watch a performance and are like, oh, that's easy. I mean, I've had people tell me, oh, I could do that. That's easy. I'm like, no. If you think it's easy, then I'm doing an <laughs> extraordinary job because it's hard. <laughs> Um, so it's hard enough to build that strength and, and, um, defy gravity the way that we do. So in addition to that, don't fight the pole because the pole is being your masculine. So be the feminine. And I think you'll find some powerful results. <laughs> yeah. And it's not saying that, you know, the feminine en- energy is weak, like quite the, oh. con- quite the contrary, like, you know, so you still build muscle or, you know, don't be mistaken by this. You know, oh yeah, absolutely. Like it's, no, the feminine is a fierce force. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's powerful. It's um, you know, I think about the qualities of love and beauty, and how often these are kind of you know run over in our society as being these like sweet elements, but they're not. I mean, love is one of the most powerful <laughs> elements in the fucking universe. It binds everything together and creates this experience of the miraculous. And there is an incredible depth of power there. And so is beauty. I mean, beauty moves mountains. Beauty inspires the world. And and there's a deep power there. Um, on top of, you know, the fluff, there's there is something guttural in, in these elements. And, and that's what we are as women. We're these powerful, fierce forces. And, um, um, yeah, I, I love, I love us. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I also love that you bring this to the outside world. So like, you know, you may practice in like your beautiful fortress or, you know, your, <laughs> your, your sensory rooms, but you also perform as you mentioned before. And like mm-hmm. one place I know that you've performed, like you, you choose unexpected arenas. Like I see you perform outside a lot and I saw that you yeah. performed at Burning Man. Right. So mm-hmm. like, what what are some of these interesting places and how did this even happen? Um, well, I've uh, this was my third time at Burning Man and every time I bring a pole so I can specifically perform and then I can also teach and just make it a forum and a place where women can gather and experience themselves. The, the experience of Burning Man in general is all about self-expression. And as a pole dancer, you would appreciate this fact, but there are actually poles everywhere there. There are poles on cars. There are poles in all types of installation experiences. Um, Can you tell you know, people, sorry to interrupt, I just realized that people may not know yeah. what Burning Man is. <laughs> okay, well, um, Burning Man is, uh, it, many people think it's a festival of sorts, but it's not actually. It's um, radical self-reliance and you and radical self-expression. Um, there are 10 commandment kind of um uh, like doctrine, like a doctrine they go by, which these are like two of them. So it's like radical self-reliance. You bring all your own stuff, um, in terms of like how you're going to live that week. Um, so all your own supplies, there's no vendors, so you can't buy food. You can't buy stuff. There's no paraphernalia you can buy or t-shirts or anything like that. Um, it's quite literally a radical experience. No $5 um, bottles of water. Like you get no. like the music festivals. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. Um, <laughs> it's in the so desert, you know, it's in the desert. It's in the middle of this giant lake bed. Um, there's approximately like 60 to 70,000 people that come. Um, 
And it's just a wild social experiment, how to function as a group and as kind of like a mini society um, outside the commerce of money. And um, another one of the the like um, commandments is radical self um, radical inclusion. Okay, so it's about connecting to people. It's about recognizing the oneness aspect of our spiritual force. And and there's a lot of play. So there's a lot of wild artistic installations like sculptures that you can walk inside of. Um, they burn a lot of these sculptures down at the end. The burning man is, you know, this one central man, um, that they burn who's in the center of the entire, um, circumference of the space. Um, so there's a lot of amazing things to experience there. And, um, you know, as I said, there's poles everywhere. So there's poles on like a dragon bus that's going by. There's a pole on, um, uh, you know, there's just poles everywhere. It's, it's, uh, amazing. Cause there's also amazing music everywhere. So I've been out with my friends roaming around and just strip all my clothes off and get on a pole and then come back and get dressed and go to the next <laughs> crazy situation. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I've provided a pole every time that I go. And then this time, um, I was staying with a camp who had this um, big stage set up and they let me put my pole right in the middle of the stage for the whole week. So people would just randomly come and play on the pole and dance and do things. And then, um, I would teach every day and, um, you know, people would, you know, just interact and enjoy the pole. So that's kind of how that happened. Um, it really just, my love of pole dance is what has opened the door to me bringing my pole there. Um, but I do find that it's really important, I guess, as my just own personal mission with pole to share it in, in Congress environments. So like, um, I've danced at, um, like art gallery openings or, um, just at different kinds of events. Like I do love to dance outside. I love nature. I love, cause it's a feeling practice. I love opening up to the clouds and the sky and the earth and really feel that and feel the air all around me. Um, so sharing that with people at events where they're not expecting a pole kind of, it, it, it just, it blows their mind. It gives me this experience of, um, sharing femininity and sensuality and making it a point of celebration. Um, I find that people actually really want to celebrate these aspects in themselves. And when they experience my performance, it gives them permission to dive into that. And so I've got to say there's events and parties that are before poll and then after poll. And the after poll is a lot of people loosening up. And I get a lot of comments from men specifically just being so grateful for, um, for the opportunity to celebrate my sensuality and therefore they get to like turn to the woman next to them and be like, wow, like you are a goddess. I mean, it really, it it really affects them. And I've gotten so many sweet comments from them and, um, they feel liberated and good and in the experience of enjoying the sensual. And, um, so I think for me, it's really the whole pole priestess, um, mission is the underlying tone of it is healing, healing, you know, it's healed me from past traumas. I feel like it heals women as a community to come together and dance and play and, um, become strong and empowered. And it also heals people to watch these performances. So. Wow. Yeah. That was a good way to to sum it up. And like, you know, uh, you're proving that, sexuality is not shameful or sensuality is not shameful and you know letting people appreciate it for its beauty instead of feeling like this is some type of like seedy situation where they're being like forced to do something they don't want to do or like you know oppressed in some way so Mm -hmm. um, or like somehow devious Yeah. yeah I mean, people, I think, God, one of, you know, the witch hunt went on for almost 600 years. So there is a deep ingrained in our like genes to feel shame around our sexuality. And I honestly can tell you from experience that when a woman presents herself in her full power with all of her energy, all of her sensuality, um, it, it heals people and it liberates them men and women. And I just, I feel so grateful that I get to be an instrument, um, in, in that 
point of healing in this time. Um, I just posted something on the pole priestess page, which was basically saying, um, you know, women, when, when, when women heal themselves in, you know, in this present time, we heal the past and we heal the future. And, um, so I think it's really important to, um, to liberate yourself, to love yourself because that does change the world. It is a form of activism. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. I feel like I agree with that a hundred percent. Like, um, you know, I brought up Elmetra Karastan's, um, podcast episode earlier, but she said something along the lines that like being masculine in a masculine world is not social progress. Mm. Being feminine in a masculine world, that's, you know, outside (sighs) of, uh, yeah, outside of pornography and outside of, um, you know, even just sex, that's, that's pro- social progress right there. So totally. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that you said that. Yeah. And you're preaching the same thing. And so, you know, as you said, even if you're not teaching right now, you're in the midst of growing pole priestess into something that's going to be available, you know, mm-hmm. as like a workshop in the future. And in the meantime, we can, I'm going to put all of your social media in the show notes so they can find your website, sign up for your newsletter, you know, follow you on social media because yeah. you preach all of this stuff at the same time and you can just learn that way as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I feel deeply passionate about this work. And again, like as the practice is slow, I don't feel a rush to like, oh, I got to teach and I got to do this and that yeah. with it. I know that, you know, when the time is right, I'll be able to, um, offer these experiences for people. And really I want the pole priestess practice to be, um, an experience, not just a class. Yeah. So I think that this time where I'm kind of in my own incubated little space with it will yield some very powerful results later. Yeah, definitely. There's no, you know, rush for, this is something to, for all of us to remind ourselves that, you know, it's things to our process, things we want to achieve. It takes yeah. time. And so, you know, don't don't rush it and ha- and try to force it before it's its own time. So totally, thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, let's jump into the second part of the interview. The questions that I ask everyone. Okay. So who is your pull crush? Ooh, um, <laughs> I mean, obviously there's a lot because there's so many amazing right, women right. pulling. But I have to say, um, Marion Cromp is mm-hmm. probably my all time crush. She is just the embodiment of everything I think is graceful and beautiful. And, um, her pace, her sense of pace is just, she, if there was some like great example, I could give you of someone who is moving from breath, she would be it. That's a good one. And you know what? She did something very pole priestess esque (laughs) at pole expo this past year where she did this workshop where you had to team up and you had to just stare at someone in the eyes for like, I think it was like a minute straight or something. And it was to really just break down those walls and to kind of like further connect with people. And, you know, I think she spoke about how that, you know, emotion can be transferred into movement, which I feel like. Mm-hmm. something that you totally began that is, with. <laughs> yeah, she is, she is a pole priestess, that yeah. is for sure. <laughs> I agree. And so mm-hmm. how would you like to see the pole community evolve over the next five years? Um, well, I think it's naturally evolving in a really interesting way. Mm-hmm. Um, there are already. So I think that what I would just, what I would hope to see is that it continues to be, um, not only pole, but just female sexuality, female empowerment continue to become more mainstream. I think it's when women heal themselves, they offer a healing space for men as well. So everyone wins when a woman is empowered and healthy and powerful. And pole is just such a essential, um, symbol of, of, of all of that. It brings, it ties all of that together. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see it become, um, less seen as some shady underground thing and, and accepted as a point of empowerment for women. And I think like we're seeing now, um, classes for little girls or kid, little kids, and you're seeing kids play with the pole. And I have, pole dancing friends whose kids are really good at polling actually at like seven and um and I think uh so yeah I would just like to see it um evolve as a point of empowerment and um see women's sensuality as a point of empowerment in general yeah yeah and even you know you wouldn't teach a kid the same way you would teach you know an adult woman of course course. it's like you know it's 
it, but there is something like I love, um, there's, um, a friend of mine here is actually opening a studio that's going to be accessible for kids too. And like, oh, I'm like, awesome. that's freaking awesome. Like, cause it's the, it's a pole. So like, yeah, exactly. It's just a you, pole. Yeah. But like how you teach that the, the, the movement, inter, you know, integrating with the pole through your breath and everything that can be taught to any age and probably should be taught to younger kids. So they're not again, like hurting themselves or forcing themselves to do something that their body's like, nah. (laughs) Oh yeah. I mean, Hey, breathing, bringing oxygen into your body, being sensitive to your body, having positive body image, um, ideas, um, understanding that your body is a miracle. That's, there's nothing, you know, over 21 about that. Um, we can, (laughs) we can start loving ourselves right away. you know, how that would shape the world. I mean, oh I, gosh, I think right. that would be pretty positive. Um, if you raise you know, kids from the young age to like not be so critical of themselves and others, could you imagine like just even like the decrease in internet trolls? That would make me happier. Oh, yeah, right. No, in every way you would, I mean, you would be sound within yourself. So why would you have to throw shit at anyone else? Or imagine the kind of relationships you'll um, attract to yourself later when you are of age. Um, you know, what attraction based on self-respect, self-love, healthy boundaries, all of those things. I mean, you can, you sh- we should be teaching our children these things. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, I feel like just your theory of practice that sh- it should just be more incorporated more into pool studios should offer things like this just because, um, mm-hmm. I feel like it would be a great foundational course, you know, for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's tons of ways to go and I love how pole is interpreted in all of these amazing ways. And I appreciate all of the different aspects of it yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, it just, it blows my mind that the movement is, has just erupted in this crazy, awesome way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about including everything. I'm not saying that my way is the way. No, or no. It's just, it's, it's a way and, um, and it's a fun way and it feels good. Um, so yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's all. Yeah, and proof that you can get woo woo with the pole and, you know, <laughs> and then let that like, just be a part of like whatever style you, you end up embracing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So did, uh, did we share everything that you have coming up? Um, like I said, we will put all of your contact info. In the yeah, I would say just, um, you know, if you're interested in keeping up with it, uh, fill out the contact form on my website or follow me on Instagram or some other social media platform and um, just, you know, get in, get in dialogue with me, basically. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm nice. there and, I'm, and this is what I do and this is what I love and... Um, I am available to be a support for anyone who has questions or d- wants more tips or, um, you know, anything like that. I'm, I'm totally approachable and available. Oh, that's so generous of you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, before, before we sign off, can you leave us with, um, an empowering message or quote or anything just to, Oh, sign off with? yes, I sure can. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> So again, quoting uh, Gabrielle Roth, um, she's just someone who's really gone deep in into dance and movement. I'm going to put has, a link to that in the show notes too, because I don't know what that is. So I'm yeah, we, you you should because okay. she, I mean, her journey has been incredible, and she's passed now, but okay. she's left a legacy, a global legacy. Um, so anyway, the quote is: If you want to give birth to your true self, you are going to have to dig deep down into that body of yours and let your soul howl. Like so it. get down in there. Let that people. soul howl. Yeah. That's... Let those emotions out. Get deep. Get wild. <laughs> get free. <laughs> yes. That's a perfect way to sign off. And Rebecca, I really appreciate you like talking to us about all these things that may be a little foreign to, to some people, <laughs> but it's just like super interesting. Like I love everything you stand for. I'm going to try to integrate more of this into my personal practice. So okay. Yeah, it was so great talking with you. Likewise, Crimson. Thank you for the opportunity and the curiosity. Yeah, of course. Bye. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Pole Parlor podcast. Want more? Visit poleparlor.com for show notes and to link to the Facebook group where you can connect with other poleaholics and continue the conversation. Listen to past episodes and subscribe to new episodes on the website, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. Lots of love, babes. Thanks for listening.